G'day folks and I hope you've enjoyed the storms over the weekend and there's plenty more to come if you live in the northeastern part of Australia and the northern parts of the Northern Territory. My name's Chris Nitzo, this is an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for the nation today the 8th of December 2014 sponsored by our major sponsor this year Campbell Scientific Australia when measurements matter. Firstly, we'll have a look at where the rain has fallen over the past week, and we can see the Kimberley region has seen a bit of a lull in activity over the last few days. However, previous to that, they were still receiving some pretty good thunderstorm activity in the far northern tip of the Kimberley. Now, that thunderstorm activity will come back to the region probably in about a couple of, or two to three days' time. We'll start to see uh, an increase and in pushing back towards the more populated areas of Derby and Broome. Over to the Northern Territory, we've had some really good thunderstorm and, and rain activity uh, over over the uh, Jabiru district and also over the far northern Arnhem district. However, we, we didn't manage to, to get too much activity happening over Gove. Uh, Darwin itself, pretty standard week for that, for, for that city. And we saw anywhere from 25 to over 100 millimetres in the past week over parts of the Territory. And that activity going down uh, southwards a long way. So a lot of places in the central parts of the Territory that don't normally receive much rainfall unless there's a cyclone around or unless the monsoon drifts southwards have received some very good rainfall. Over to Queensland, and I guess it's just been a story of overall hit and miss type uh, rainfall. However, because, as I mentioned, we're going to see so much thunderstorm activity, these places that have missed out uh, will eventually uh, come good and make good, and you'll see that happen over this coming week. But similar story for Queensland as for NT, there's places there that have copped uh, 15 or 10 to 15 millimetres in the past week, and there's places that have copped well over 100 millimetres in the past week. As I mentioned, with thunderstorm activity, it's always like that. It's always hit and miss, but because of the extent of the storm activity, you're almost surely going to see some very significant rainfalls over the most parts of the state. The only thing to note cyclone-wise is the Western Australian region. The Bureau of Meteorology are monitoring a tropical low that we've been telling subscribers about now for well over a week. They are expected to form around about 100 degrees east and push in a westerly direction at this stage. Uh, and most of the guidance not developing this system. A couple of models are, are quite intent on developing it significantly, but the more reliable models are keeping this quite weak. So let's have a quick look at those models. So here's the tropical low we're talking about, and we're seeing that overall the computer guidance is pushing it towards the west, further and further away from Western Australia. So no real threat to any parts of WA. It may develop pretty close to Christmas or Cocos Island, or it may, at least in its formative stages, be pretty close to Christmas or Cocos Island. Now, as I mentioned, or as the Bureau mentioned, this is expected to remain a fairly weak system. This is the UK Met model. It's the only one that's really showing significant development. Here's the Euro's take on it all. The Euro has the system right in this area. It's almost like a shear line though, so it's not really a low. It lo almost looks like a bit of a trough line, and you can make it out there in that very we weak wind regime. Now, if we take a look and fast forward a little to Thursday, and once again, we have the system located here, but not really developing at all. And once again, looks more like a very sheer troughy type line here of, of convergence. Coming a little closer to home, we have a off the WA coast, we have a bit of a shear line as well, but this one's orientated north-south. And on that shear line, we expect to see a very, very weak circulation possibly develop on the northern edge of that shear line. Uh, once again, not expected to be very shallow circulation, and we're not expecting it to intensify. However, there are just one or two computer models that have picked up this shear line and intensify a tropical low rapidly off that shear line. Now, it is quite unlikely to do that because of the amount of dry air in the district so you can see here in the region this whole region or this big tongue of very dry air coming off the Pilbara Kimberley region and pushing northwards into the southeast Indian Ocean right around where that northern northern edge of that shear line is and where that low is expected to form uh, so at this stage folks it's very unlikely to form but the other, the one thing that it does have going for it is just to the north, we have some very moist air, or sorry, the two things. We've got some very moist air here. We've got some pretty moist air coming into the Kimberley too later on this week. And because of that and coupled with low levels of vertical wind shear in the, in the region, we probably just need to watch what happens along that shear line just in case something does happen uh, and the outlying models 
get one right. But at this stage, I can't see it happening. But we'll keep an eye on it nonetheless. The Lightning Tracker, thanks to WeatherZone, makes things look pretty. And it's only going to get prettier as the week progresses, especially as we head into later in the week. You can see a lot of storms here over Queensland. We'll see an increase in storm activity over the NT as well later on in the week. And we'll also see an introduction or a reintroduction of storms across the Kimberley. Now let's have a quick look at rainfalls. To the north today, you can see that weak tropical wave showing up on the rainfall figures. Now, remembering we're watching that wave as it pushes west uh, and forms a bit of a shear line out here off the uh, off the Kimberley of, or off the Pilbara coastline, that north-south shear line we talked about. So that's something we'll need to watch. Obviously, we're seeing those thunderstorms that I mentioned over southeastern Queensland and he then heading up towards the northwest of Queensland as well. And we're seeing some isolated activity along the north coast of the Territory. Tomorrow, that shear line or that... that that weak trough pushes westwards across the Timor Sea and towards Indonesia or Bali. And then what we see is an increase in thunderstorm activity across southern and central Queensland. Uh, still not making too much, not, none of that making it to the coast yet. We've got fairly weak steering influences. We'll see a widespread but isolated activity across the territory. And so we're seeing generally rainfall totals quite low because the models can't agree on where those storms will be. But be aware that if you are under one of those storms, you're going to see a lot more rain than, pro than projected here. Uh, also, the Kimberley, we start to see an increase in shower and storm activity in that region too tomorrow. On Wednesday, we continue to see fairly active conditions just to the north of Australia. A lot of shower and storm activity there. We see a big increase in shower and storm activity across the Kimberley. Uh, we see a continuation of isolated shower and storm activity wi widespread in nature or in coverage across the Northern Territory. And the activity across uh, southern Queensland eases off just a little on Wednesday, but don't worry, it'll be back with a vengeance on Thursday. Uh, and we have probably an increase in activity across northern inland Queensland on Wednesday. As we head to Thursday, we see more intense activity across the cent central half of the Northern Territory and also the Northern Kimberley. Once again, that activity getting very close now to Broome and Derby, those more populated areas of the Kimberley. Over to Queensland, and I told you it'll be back with a vengeance. And on Thursday, we see widespread moderate to heavy falls across the southern inland parts of Queensland and extending northwards into northern inland Queensland as well. Still not quite making it onto the central coast and the northeast coast just yet, but uh, some, some activity will, but overall it won't because of some weak steering influences. But don't worry, that all changes on an epic day on Friday. All of that activity starts to make it to the coast. Anywhere south of about Ingham, you're going to see fairly widespread showers and thunderstorms, possibly getting some very heavy rainfall on this coastline here. Models do disagree, and we'll talk a lot more about that on the subscriber update. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about why it's all happening and where it's going to happen, Join us on our subscription website at ozcyclonechasers.com.au. But suffice to say, we're going to see a lot of activity here on the Friday as the change pushes eastwards. We're going to see an increase in storm activity across the northern half of the Northern Territory. And once again, we're going to see a continuation of active conditions across the North Kimberley. That wave to the north of Australia pushes westwards and could possibly spawn that low, as I mentioned, to the south there of Indonesia. But once again, the model guidance is pretty intense or about 70 to 80 percent uh, likely nothing will happen out of that uh, but there are that 10 to 20 percent that we do need to watch those outlying models that might get might possibly get one right overall for the next eight days so for the next week we're looking at some really good shower and storm activity developing over the Kimberley particularly on days three to eight uh, over the northern northern parts of the Northern Territory pretty standard conditions there not not overly active but the good news probably is that that Gove is starting to get close to the mix there of some rainfall. And obviously over eastern and particularly southeastern Queensland, we're looking at some very heavy rainfall in the next week. But general falls of 15 plus millimetres. Just a reminder, folks, to check your state updates. If you are a subscriber to Oz Cyclone Chasers, check your state updates tomorrow, particularly the Queensland one I think will be quite interesting. Uh, we'll talk about where the storm activity will be between now and Friday. Our next update nationally will be on Thursday night. Thanks for watching tonight and ho hope that you do receive one of those thunderstorms, especially for areas inland that still really need it. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.